This is Fort Worth, Texas. My hometown as it looks today. In Fort Worth, we say that every baby girl born here is already in love with some Fort Worth baby boy, since Providence doesn't want the little baby girl taking chances and not finding happiness. This may sound a little exaggerated, but in my case, it worked. I'm sure Providence had a hand in it because it was in church that I first met Ben. Or rather, I should say, outside church, because my family was Methodist and he is Baptist. And sometimes you know how that can be. Oh, oh dear, I mean, excuse me. I guess I wasn't looking. I'm sorry. Excuse me. You already said that once. And I mean it. Truly, I do. Okay, so you mean it. Good day, sir. The very next day, as I was leaving the library, we met again. Oh! <laughs> There's nothing to laugh at, Gertrude. There's nothing <laughs> funny about it at all. But it is funny. <laughs> Let her laugh. <laughs> From then on, life wasn't quite the same for Valerie Fox. That's me. Day and night, at school, at home, in church, my mind was full of Ben. I was surprised and glad to learn that his family had just moved into our neighborhood. We're living almost directly across the street. Ben was a poor boy. Not that we were rich. And after school and on weekends, he'd work at the country club, Caddy. That's how Ben's interest in golf began. An interest that was to lead us both on a great adventure. Thanks a lot. You can hit a few with him if you like. Gosh, can I? Sure. Thanks very much, Mr. Thomas. I'll clean him up and leave him in the golf shop. Okay. Hey, the golf ball didn't do you any harm. Why try to kill it? I'm just practicing, Mr. Gibbs. You're the new caddy, aren't you? Golf ball's pretty sensitive. Now try another one. Remember, take it easy. Yes, sir. That's better. I'm gonna take some lessons from you as soon as I save up some money. It's always a good idea. How many do you figure you'll need? All I can pay for. You see, sir, I want to be a pro. That's not a bad ambition. What's your name, sir? Ben Hogan, sir. So you made up your mind to be a pro, huh? Yes, sir, a good one. Okay, Ben, you stay in there swinging. I'll keep my eye on you. No charge for free. Now try another. Remember, take it easy. Thank you very much, sir. Keep swinging just like that, Ben. So long. Thanks a lot. And so Ben began his career in golf. But a boy doesn't go from caddy to champion overnight. He goes from knockabout caddy games to caddy tournaments. He's paid off in golf balls or silver-plated cups. He plays for the glory of winning and the hope of becoming a real professional next year or the next. Even the winner of the West Texas Amateur has to put his trophy on the shelf. Go back to work at a bread and butter job, save his money, practice golf in his spare time, grow up. Say, Ben, the boss is gonna get the idea you don't like this job. What do you mean, get the idea? Ain't you guys heard? He's quitting. Quitting? What are you gonna do, Ben? I'm gonna get married and play golf. <laughs> Darling, it's gorgeous. Well, it's not very big. It's only a third of a carrot. It's huge and beautiful. Ben? What? You know, you haven't really proposed. Oh, I didn't have to. You did. When? A long time ago when we were kids, back of our house. What did I say? Hmm? <laughs> well, you said, uh, oh, Ben, you're two inches shorter than I am. Do you think that when we grow up, you'll be at least my size? <laughs> yeah. And you know, I, I did even better than that. And the answer is yes.
you say, uh, how's it about you and I taking a walk downtown, huh? What for? Oh, just look around. I, uh, got something to show you. What? Yes, and I think you like it. At least I hope so. Come on. Time's brighter every minute. You happy? <laughs> about to burst. What are we doing down here? See that car? Third one over here. What about it? Well, they're asking $600 for it, but I think we can get it for $550. It's only four years old, Val. The motor's just been overhauled. It's got brand new tires. Look at those tires down there. I drove it this afternoon, and I think it's a good buy. You mean you want to buy it? Yes. Yes, if it's okay with you. Evening, Ben. Been waiting for you. She's all gassed up, raring to go. We'll only be gone a few minutes. That's all right. Give her a good test. Thank you, Mr. Johnson. I bet we can get to the top without shifting gears. I told you she'd make it without him. Honey, what's the matter? Val, what's wrong? We stopped. Yeah, we sh What's the matter? I'm inclined to get car sick. I'd never admit it, but I always do. I'm sorry, honey. I'm terrible. Oh, I'll get over it. Yeah. Let's just get a breath of fresh air. Yes. got your heart set on buying an Abbott. Well, since you enjoy it so much, we'll just have to go easy on other things. You know, Val, I'm not thinking of buying that car for pleasure. No, I'm thinking that maybe it's about time for me to take a crack at the big-time golf tournaments. You mean leave Fort Worth? Honey, I got nearly $2,000 saved up. Now, I figure that even if worse comes to worse, I don't even make a dime. It'll last us about a year. Of course, we have to be very careful. A year? Well, it'd take that long for me to find out if tournament golf is for me. And you know, Val, if I make good, it'll mean more money than I can ever expect to make around here. It'll give us a chance to travel, meet people, see new places. It'll be a better life for both of us, but if I don't, I promise you we'll come back here and I'll never mention tournaments again. A whole year. I'll say one thing, Mr. Hogan. You're certainly full of surprises. Tell me more about it. Well, there's not very much more to tell. We, we start up in Canada and work our way across the circuit to California. Kind of follow the sun. Maybe we'll be lucky, maybe not. I, I don't know. I, but I'll have to be very honest with you, Val. It's a gamble. It, it's, it's a big gamble. Ben, dear, please don't misunderstand me. I know how long you've been dreaming and working and hoping that someday you could make golf your life's work. And I do think you ought to give it a fair chance. But I think you ought to go alone. I'll wait here. But Ben, I'd only be an added expense. No. I wouldn't be any good without you, Val. I just wouldn't. It's a deal.
We'd follow the sun, he said. Summer, fall, and winter. We didn't know then that it would be many summers and falls and winters before we'd return to our own home. We didn't know the road ahead. With hope in our hearts and about $1,400 in our jeans, the newly married Hogans joined the tail end of the professional golfer's caravan and headed for our first tournament. Stop being car sick now we're here. Oh, sorry about it. Those um those seasick pills didn't help you any, did they? They made me seasick and car sick. <laughs> Guess I better check in and get out to the practice tee and get the kinks out. The play starts tomorrow. I better find a place for us to stay. Well, why don't you wait, honey, until later and I'll go with you. Well, all right. What do I do in the meantime? Hmm? I mean, what does a golfer's wife do well, when I, I go... I don't know. You go inside and meet the other wives, I guess. Oh, simple as that. Well, why not? All right, come on. I'll go with you. Ben? Hmm? Darling? We're both scared, aren't we, and taking it out on each other? I'm sorry. Come well, on, maybe the tournament chairman has a wife or something, huh? Oh, look, this is silly. You go practice. I'll be okay. You sure? Huh? Of course. Well, I'll only be a couple of hours, honey. Hit him far and straight, dear. My husband said Jimmy Thompson drove the 16. Oh, oh no. You know, we left our laundry at Pinehurst. Oh, oh that's too no. bad. So, oh, Dorothy, you deal for a tenth of a cent, okay? Fine. 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 Say, where's Edie? Has anyone seen Edie? No. No, 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 no she's not playing. Oh, Mrs. Willie Clinton. Hello, I'm Mrs. Ben Hogan. Just joined the tour? Yes. Glad you're going to be with us. Thank you, Arne. So you married a golfer. Poor child. Come on over and meet the sisterhood. Then we'll have a chat. enough, darling. You've been at it four hours. Hello, honey. Chickens are going to roost. What about us? Oh, you mean about a place to sleep, huh? Yeah. Well, I got that all fixed up. I met a big-time golfer named Chuck Williams. He's getting us a rate at a swell motor court. Good. Come on, let's go, huh? Chuck Williams won by two shots. Yeah, Jimmy Thompson second, Goodall third. What happened? Hey, Bob, how'd you do? I got in that cabbage and thought I'd never get out. I don't know how they expect a man to putt on these greens. It was great for me. I roll them in from all over. Hey, Joe, here's your sweater. That ain't sand in those traps. That's cement. What are you talking about? I had a putt that long for an eagle. Then a fly got in my ear. Hey, Locker. I'll be right back. You the Orange Aid? Yeah. How much is that? Were you in the tournament? Yeah. Then there's no charge. Mr. Chuck Williams is buying. If you were in the tournament. I was in it. Okay, okay. All the Chuck. Ah. Uh. Thank you. Yes, sir, I sure was covered with horseshoes. Everything fell in the cup. You know how it is, just one of those days when I could do no wrong. It takes a whole lot more than a little luck to shoot the 34 you came in with. A little luck and sheer genius. That sounds more like William. And you can quote me on that, too, Jay. Hey, Texas, where are you running off to? 
I missed you outside. Congratulations. Thanks for the drink. Now, how'd you make out? <laughs> I didn't. Oh, Ben, I, I want you to meet Jay Dexter. Ben Hogan, another Texan. How are you? Mr. Dexter writes for the papers. He's Mr. Goff himself. Oh, yes, I, I've read your column. Thanks for listing my name. Oh, but it's spelled H-O, not H-A. I'll try to remember. Wouldn't want anybody to get me confused with Walter Hagen. I don't think there'll be any danger of that. Oh, <laughs> Jay's always getting people's name wrong. He, he just doesn't like to be called on it. I'm glad I was on this. I'll, uh, I'll watch out for it. I wouldn't want to offend Hagen. Thanks for the tip. Oh, Ben. Say, why don't you stick around? Jay and I are going to throw a little party. Yes, I can't, Chuck. I'll take a rain check on it, though. See you next stop. Okay, Ben. Yeah. Something tells me you've lost a fan. Something tells me he's lost one, too. Well, here's to more horseshoes. Hi. Hi. I'm sorry I let you down, honey. No, you didn't. You want $25. And who are we to sniff at $25? Ah, it froze out there. I just... Were you cold? Ah, it wasn't. I froze inside, Val. I'm scared. Yeah, tied up in a knot. Well, that's just first tournament jitters. Because Willie Clinton says that all the frozen... Oh, it isn't people. that. It's the people, the crowds. I, 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 it's just that I got to learn to concentrate more, I guess. I got to stay with my game. That's it. Stay with my game. You will, dear. You know, I'm just beginning to realize this isn't going to be any picnic, Val. It's going to be kind of tough going for both of us. And maybe we ought to pack up and go home before... Ben you... Hogan, pack up and go home just because... Well, we won't. We made a deal, you and I, and we're going to stick to it. $1,400 worth. That's my girl. <laughs> well, what do you got there? Hmm? Notebook. Keep our accounts in. All the wives have one. Yeah. Miss Willie Clinton calls hers the doomsday book. Niagara Falls, $25. And hundreds of dollars in experience. And so, still hopeful, even sometimes gay, the Hogans joined a caravan of gypsies. It was easy to forget certain figures which went into the notebook, but watching Ben practicing, practicing day and night, Literally wearing his hands to the bone. That was another matter. The caravan kept moving on. As the Hogans continued to follow the sun across the country, only two things became certain. They were seeing a lot of America, and they were getting awfully sunburned. When the Pasadena Open was over, Ben and I were, of course, very glad that Chuck had won it. But, well, you know, we can't go on saying chin up and stuff with a balance in the book of $68.21. Nevertheless, we did, and headed for Oakland. Hogan's last stand. a beauty, Ben. Mind telling me how you... Well, imagine that guy. He wouldn't he even... He can't give you a golf lesson now, Mac. Huh. What'd you expect from that wooden Indian? Come on, let's follow Williams and DuBarrett. More fun and better golf. Yeah. It's nothing, honey. It's just a car outside. Oh. What are you doing up in the middle of the night? You know, Val, I think I've figured out something about my putting. You know, if I shorten my stroke tomorrow, maybe that'll help. I hope so, dear. Imagine after all these years discovering a little thing like that, huh? Well, now that you've discovered it, why don't you come back to bed? No, just a minute, honey. I want to practice just a little bit longer, huh? Oh. I'm hungry. Eat an orange. I don't want an orange. Oh, come on. 
It's good for you. Got a lot of vitamins in it. Yeah, it's filling. I don't think I can eat another one. I bet I ate 97 if I ate one. Squeeze me in presto orange juice. I'd give a million dollars for something solid to sink my teeth into. A million dollars. Can you imagine there are really people in the world that have a million dollars? Quite a lot of people. Texas alone there must be 15 million millionaires. Bet Houston's swarming with them. There's some balance. Five dollars. Say, where is it? I won't tell you. Come on, tell me. I'm going out and I'm going to buy all the hot dogs and hamburgers in the neighborhood. No. Yes? No. Yes? I said no. I said yes. Shut up in there. The next morning, Ben left for the golf course early. After eating a hearty breakfast of orange juice, sliced oranges, and oranges and crackers. It was the last day of the tournament, so I didn't have long to wait to know the outcome. Just one long, endless day. Hello, dear. How'd it go? Any man who shoots a 67 in the morning has no business shooting a 74 in the afternoon. That's all right. You did your best. You tried. No, I didn't, Val. If I'd have shot two 67s, I'd have tied for first money with demerit. First money? Yeah. But no. No, I waste one shot on the 11th. I waste two shots on the 13th. Then I throw away two more at the water hazard on the 16th. Ben, hmm. where did you finish? I tied for sixth with Dutch Harrison. I won $285. <laughs> Two hundred and eighty-five dollars. Oh, Ben! Oh. Honey, I, I didn't lose. I won. <laughs> oh, no. But you have no idea what you won. It isn't only the money. It's, it's something greater than that. Something I've been waiting for a long time. The gallery doesn't scare you anymore. What's the matter? What's wrong? Say, I... I, I didn't pick up the check when I left. Oh. <laughs> See, I'm, I'm not used to it. I, I'll be right back, Val. I'll go get it. I'll call Chuck, and we'll put on a big feed. Hamburgers and Cokes and hamburgers What do you mean, hamburgers and Cokes? No, we'll get a, a lot of that, what do you call it, that vichyssoise. A lot of caviar and tons of steak. Steak. In the next few years, things began to look up. Ben had begun to climb. Then, like millions of others, Ben went off to war. When it was over, I thanked Providence for returning him safe and sound. He was hardly out of uniform when out came the golf clubs, and we were off again following the sun. After playing in a few minor tournaments here and there, we joined the big caravan in the colorful city of Reno, Nevada. Here, Chuck Williams won the Open. And here, too, a new member joined the group. Someone who was to become very important to all of us. It happened at a party that Chuck gave after the tournament. <laughs> What's in touch? What's in touch? What, me nervous out on that course today? Don't be silly. Absolutely, positively, emphatically, no. I just kept saying to myself, Chucky boy, Chucky, if you want a drink out of that lovely loving cup, you gotta win it. So, I just kept thinking of this sparkly stuff, and nothing, or nothing, absolutely nothing that I did went wrong. Absolutely nothing. Oh, champagne, I love it. Now, a toast, a toast to our fine feathered friends. All the little birdies and eagles in the world. <laughs> there you are, skull. Hey, you gotta hand it to that guy. 
Always clowning, always completely relaxed. Yeah, I wish I knew how he did it. Very simple. Just go on an alcohol diet. Yeah, <laughs> yeah well, drinks or no drinks, on or off the golf course, nothing phases him. Uh, when he was playing today, he, he stopped and posed for pictures, he signed autographs, he clowned with the press, and he shot a 69. You know, if I did just, just one of those things... You wouldn't be Ben Hogan. Yeah, well, I'd be a pretty popular golfer. Also a bachelor. Hmm? <laughs> <laughs> you didn't think I could do it, did you? <laughs> Well, don't you just stand there and enjoy yourself. Just get me another bottle of champagne. <laughs> yes, sir, Mr. Williams. He's not going to drink another one. He most certainly is. And then after that, he'll get somebody to lie down on the floor with his mouth open while he chips cocktail onions into it with a nibbling. <laughs> the big idiot. Well, he wants everybody to have a good time. Good time. He ought to be put away. Well, if you feel that way about him, why did you come to his party? Where do you suggest I go? I just happen to be married to the gentleman. What? what? Sure. Well, I'm just as surprised as you are. Well, when did all this happen? About a half hour ago, after he won that cup. That's one of the few advantages of being in Reno. I can't believe it. Well, why not? It's not such a prize. Oh, no, I didn't mean that. Look, I'm Valerie Hogan, and this Yes, is... I know. This is Ben, Chuck's best friend. Oh, there, I'm Norma. Norma Williams. Congratulations. I still can't get over it. All right. And I'll tell you exactly how this little tragedy happened. A couple of months ago, I was in New York, sweating out a divorce for my second husband. He was a clarinet player. And I met Chuck. Well, in an unguarded moment, the chemistry ran high, and we made a sort of a deal. I told him if he won three tournaments in a row, I'd be on hand to say I do. <laughs> well, he won them. I'm on hand. So I did. <laughs> Here's to both of you. We know you'll be very happy. Thanks. Thanks a lot. Mm -hmm. Sure we will. I love a winner. Hey, look! <laughs> oh, look, he's changed his act. Hey, are you see? Told you I could do it. Baby! How... <laughs> Meet the group. The caravan and the years rolled on. Then came 1948, and my man began to hit his stride. Yes, the dreams of that boy from Fort Worth, Texas, were being realized. Ben had become a champion, a great champion. But very deep in his heart and mind was the unhappy thought that he wasn't a popular one. But always hopeful that someday, somehow, he'd be both, we continued to follow the sun to beautiful Pebble Beach in Del Monte, California, for the annual Bing Crosby Tournament. And now Chuck is about to putt. Poor Chuck. This morning, at the beginning of this last round, it looked like it was his tournament. He was leading by three strokes, but he's blown sky high. He's had nothing but trouble all day. <laughs> Good old Chuck. He always leaves them laughing, doesn't he? Middlecoff is finished with a 279, and Ben Hogan, the Texas iceberg, can tie him if he can get two birdies on these last two holes. Think Holton's drive went in the ocean? No, it's there in the rough. It's pretty close. Oh, well, the woods are beautiful this time of year. <laughs> Oh, 
Hogan is taking a brassy, which means he's going for an eagle three. That would mean a win instead of a tie. There's no room for mistake now. Oh, that's real attractive. <laughs> He's always been here. <laughs> what are you going to do, Chuck? What would you do? I quit. <laughs> oh, can't do that. Might hurt Father Crosby's feelings. <laughs> I really need is a saw. <laughs> it went that away. <laughs> well, here we are on the 18th green. Williams is 30 feet away, Puget's about 25, and Hogan uh, is around, uh, oh, about 20. Chuck's ready to putt. Pull it. Chuck took his bogey six, and now Cam Puget's ready to putt. Cam dropped his short putt for his par five, and now this is the big moment, ladies and gentlemen. It's a difficult shot, even for the mechanical man. But if he sinks it, it's all over but the shouting. And Mr. Big is off to another year of record playing golf. Beach, California. Couldn't happen to a nicer Texas. Thanks, Chuck. Where'd you wind up? Oh, it's Sequoia National Forest. I must have chopped down more trees today. Uh, you'll make up for it when we play at the big one in Los Angeles. Sure. Uh, would you please give me your autograph, Mr. Williams? The name's Jimmy Mulvaney. Sure, sure, Jim. My dad and I followed you all the way. Too bad you lost. Well, it's an ill wind that gathers no moss or something like that, Jim. You better get Mr. Hogan's John Hancock. Mine's beginning to bounce. Oh, I'm sorry I didn't. Well, could I have your autograph? All right. It's all right, son. I'm a great fan of Mr. Williams myself. I have been for some time. Oh, well, thanks. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Don't let that throw you. They don't pay off on autographs. It's a scorecard that counts. I wonder. You can bet me that he does. Attention, please. The presentation is about to begin. Will Ben Hogan please come to the announcer stand? Let's go, huh? No, no, not me, boy. I gotta start thinking of an alibi for Norma. And between losing this tournament and tying one on last night, it is better to be good. Wow! Well, at least it was fun while it lasted. See you down in L.A. for the big one, Ben. Yes, yes. So long, Chef. I think we can get through to him now. Congratulations, Lieutenant. Why, General oh. Richardson. Hello. Well, it's good to see you. What are you doing here? Just passing through San Francisco. Hello, Val. Nice to see you again. I had to come down and root for one of my Air Force boys. Well, this is Major Ryan, Mr. and Mrs. Hogan. How do you do, How do you Major? Do? Hello, Major. Fine job, Ben. Well, thank you, sir. Didn't quite know but what you'd forgotten your former CO. What? Oh, back there while you were approaching the tent, I was standing off on the sidelines and called out, Hello, Ben, to you. Guess you didn't hear me. No, I'm afraid I didn't. I'm very sorry, General. I got so lost in my game. Oh, of course, I understood. Well, we've got to shove off. Goodbye, Val. So nice to see you. You were sweet to come. The Air Force is very proud of you, Ben. If there's anything we can do for you, let me know. Thank you, sir. And I'm very sorry about what happened on the 10th. Oh, shouldn't have mentioned it. Goodbye. Come on, Bob. Bye. Goodbye, Major. Yeah. 
He takes the time to come down and see me, and what do I do? I don't even... I don't know what's the matter with me, Val. He understood, dear. No, it isn't that. It's the same old trouble. I can't play golf and play to the gallery at the same time. I'm glad. I remember the time you couldn't play golf because of the gallery. It's no good, Val. People have me pegged as a grouch and a grump. You're exaggerating. Look at the applause you got when you finished. Uh, they always applaud the winner. Oh, ben, it's all in your mind. We've been through this so often. Generally, people are pretty darn nice. Oh, look. Mm -hmm. Just when I'm loving the whole world, our old friend, Jay Dexter. Come on, dear, let's try to be friendly. Sure. Hello, Jay. Jay. Whoa, Mr. and Mrs. Champ. Still collecting geranium pots, huh? Mm, well, I was kind of lucky. You know, Chuck hadn't gotten messed up, it might have been a different story. Oh, that's a nice modest statement. Mind if I quote you? Of course not. While you're in this unusual mood, what else can I tell your public? Well, nothing about me. Oh, a funny thing happened yesterday. Jimmy Demerit claimed a hole in one on the 16th because he said a pelican scooped his drive out of the air and dropped it in the cup. <laughs> Apparently, you're still not reading my stuff, Ben. That was in my column today. Oh. A little late, huh? Very late, Ben. What? To start buttering up to me. For years, I've been after you for stories, quotes, angles. And all I kept getting was nothing much happened today, or I, I guess I was hitting him, or, or that butte you just handed me. Hot quotes from the Texas Icicle. Ten million golf fans waiting breathlessly, and you come up with, I just hit the ball straight. Why don't you level with your public, Ben? You know what they really want to know? If it's true that your wife winds you up every morning for a 67. That's your angle. It's the mechanical man. Use it. Let me warn that one out. Darling, hmm? you go take your shower. I'll meet you outside. Get something straight, Jay. Nobody winds up Ben Hogan, but Ben Hogan. And as long as he can find the strength and the courage to wind himself up for a 33 going out and a 34 coming in, he writes your headlines. So give him a break, can't you? Ben? Well, nobody can say we didn't try. What am I doing wrong, Ben? Come on, hit another one. There you are. Typical Williams shot. Nice loft, good distance, but in the wrong fairway. Say, I think I know what your trouble is. Yeah? Mm-hmm. It's that right elbow. Right elbow? Yes, you've been bending it too much. What are you talking about? Off the golf course. Oh, liquor, huh? <laughs> Never has any effect on oh, me. Oh, no, no. You can handle that. Yeah, take it and leave it. Sure. If anything, a couple of drinks help to steady me. Yeah, well, why don't you try sipping it through a straw for a while, Chuck? Maybe that elbow won't develop a bursitis. Now you sound just like Norma. Uh, I don't know. Maybe I have been hitting it up a little too much lately. Why? For laughs. What's the diff? You're scared. Yeah. We all are sometimes. You miss a few shots, you go out and try to drink your slice away. When it happens to me, I go home and I can't eat. I growl at Val. Yeah, well, at least you get Val to growl at. Not me. If I went home and cried in my beer, little Chucky boy would find himself looking for a new bride. Norma wants a winner. That's what she married, and that's what she wants. So I go out and try and climb my way out of it. Keep bullying myself, I'll win the next one. I don't believe that about Norma. Oh, yeah? No. Come on, let's go to work, huh? All right. Hey, I gotta get to the airport, pick up Val. She's coming in from Fort Worth. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. What about our practice round? Oh, all right. Oh, uh, Norma could get it. Uh, maybe you better call her. All right. Come on, keep hitting them. Yeah, yeah, well. Keep hitting them, keep hitting them. Easy to say. Well, they stand it in. Norma? Hmm? It's none of my business, but you and Chuck aren't having any serious trouble, are you? Well, it'll do until something really somber comes along. He 
Is he still, uh, I mean, hasn't he given no. up? No, if anything, he's worse. The more he drinks, the worse he plays. The worse he plays, the more he drinks. What a ducky merry-go-round to be on. Why? I, I don't know. I can't get him to talk about it. The best I can get is that he's got some screwy notion I'm fed up and ready to walk out on him. Well, what would make him think that? Oh, he's got good cause to think so, all right. Sure he has. In the beginning, the titles he won came first with me. He always played second fiddle to them, and he knew it. But you don't feel that way now. That's why the laugh's on me. It suddenly dawned on me that whether the guy's a hot shot golfer or a dub, I love him. He's got his heart set on making a good showing in the big one. I sure hope he does for our sake. But mostly for his. I hope so, too. Thanks. If he does well, I think he'll snap out of this, and then we can pick up the pieces and hit it off together again. If not, I, I don't know. Is Mr. Chuck Williams there, please? Well, this is the last try. Why is it a man's always just left a bar when his wife asks for him? Why can't they just be honest and say he just passed off? Oh, are you sure? Well, that's the same answer. Ask if Jay Dexter's there. Hello, wait a minute. Is Mr. Jay Dexter there, please? Oh, do I want to talk to him? No. No, no, thanks anyway. Now, look, Ben, you get your sleep. I'll go and get Big Boy. Oh, don't worry. I wanted a breath of fresh air anyway. I'll be right back, honey. This is the craziest golf course you ever saw. The rough is so high, it looks like a cornfield, you see? Now, number four is a big dog leg that goes way down and turns around the other. Wait a dear, wait a dear, wait a dear. What would you say to a round of the set? What happened then, Chuck? Oh, I got her phone number. How bad are you going to beat Hagen? Uh, pardon me, I mean uh, Hogan, Chuck. Oh, Jimmy Demerit gave me the tip off on how to beat Hogan. All you got to do is shoot 18 birdies in a row and <laughs> hope that Hogan gets one par. Right. Ben! Well, well, what a surprise. Uh, hey, look, fella, if Norma sent you out to do any errands, you know. Uh, I... What are you talking about? You mind if I join you? Not at all. Well, of course not. Oh, Jay. <laughs> Anything can happen. First thing you know, Hogan will be having a drink with us. Hey, you know, that's not a bad idea. Bourbon. Uh, make it a double, will you? Yeah, ben, 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 take it easy. You know, on second thought, I believe I'll have four fingers. Four fingers? Yeah, I wouldn't want Jay writing that I'm not sociable. That'd never do, would it? Oh, dear, no. Huh? <laughs> you know, maybe if I get pie-eyed, you'll spell my name right. Oh, this can only lead to bloodshed. Come on, son. What do you mean? I'm not going anywhere. Oh, yes, you are. You're going home. I'm taking you home. You are not thinking clearly, Mr. Hogan. Coming in here and ordering a snoot ball and picking a fight with, with good old Jay. Now. As your dearest friend, I ask you, but I warn you, I will use force if necessary. Come on. I don't want any trouble. Now, well, that's better. This Hogan is loaded. Easy, <laughs> Ben, easy. Everybody's looking at you. Now what? Oh, that goof. You know, he wants to win the big one more than anything else in the world. Oh, calm down, dear. He's probably in better shape right now than you are. It's a fine way to cure his shakes. As I have too frequently remarked, very funny game, golf. Here we are, worrying ourselves to death because Chuck might lose. And you're gonna go out there tomorrow and try and beat the ears off a guy we're both pulling for. Now, try to make sense out of that. I'm sure that makes sense. Oh, heaps. I'll tell you what it all adds up to. And this, I promise, is my last profound comment on golf. It's cruel, cockeyed, and contradictory, unquote. Now go back to bed and get some sleep. Hey, you're getting kind of bossy, aren't you? Huh? You want Chuck to beat you? Yes. No. <laughs> Chuck to beat me. Go to sleep. <laughs> switched over to the sixth fairway now in order to continue to give you an account of the play between Ben Hogan and Chuck Williams. This 36-hole match play final between Hogan and Williams for the big one has unusual dramatics since Ben and Chuck are such close friends. Sentiment throughout the tournament has favored the happy-go-lucky Williams. When we last gave you a report on the fifth green, we told you that the morning round ended with Hogan only one up. But since the start of the final 18, Williams has faltered. And the Texas iceberg is now five up, coming into the sixth. 
Hogan is his usual emotionless self, but Chuck looks tired and is sweating. For his approach to the green, Williams has a nasty lie. We've seen him in these spots before, and he usually clowns his way out. But he isn't clowning today. Williams hit a miraculous recovery shot, seven feet from the pin. But with mechanical precision, Ben hit his own ball, stopping it by the pin for an easy two-footer. He's been doing this sort of thing to Williams all day. And Chuck is cracking under the relentless perfection of Hogan's game. Take the flag away, please. It's all over. The tenth green, folks. Hogan wins, ten and eight. Now, for an expert's opinion of the merciless drubbing which Mr. Hogan handed Mr. Williams, we take you now to the press tent. Norma. Mr. J. Dexter, the famous sports writer. I'm so terribly sorry it had to be Chuck. You know that. This is J. Dexter. Well, today the golf machine that is known as Ben Hogan shut the gates of mercy on Chuck Williams. And for those of you who wonder if friendship has anything to do with golf. Yeah. Tough going, Chuck. Oh, well. Lose today, win tomorrow. Just another tournament, I'll get you the next time. Yeah, I know how you counted on it. I... Oh, Benj, pal, please. We're all hands at this kill and be killed business. Unless I start a harp duet, we'll both bust out crying. Okay, now, look, don't go out tonight, huh, and try to tie one on. It's a little late to worry about me, isn't it, Ben? Ten and eight. Norm will be real proud of me now. Sure won me a prize today. Go ahead, dear. Call him.
Chuck Williams suite, please. Oh? Uh, no. No, thank you very much. They checked out. Yeah, sure won me a prize. Dear, in his right senses, Chuck would kill you if you didn't play to win. He's all mixed up. Don't fret about it. Sure. Hundred trophies and not a friend left in the world. Hey, what was it that Dexter called these things? Geranium pots? That was it, wasn't it? Yeah. Well, he's right. That's all they're good for. He'll never know how right he was. Yeah. What? About planting geraniums. In our garden. On our own half acre. What garden? What half acre? The one we own in Fort Worth. With the dearest little house. Beautiful shade trees and a lovely lawn. You haven't looked in the book lately. The deposit on the house is entered. There's some nice snapshots of it, too. Do you like it, Ben? Yeah, it's real nice. Then you won't be angry because I did it without telling you. I meant to, Ben, but you were so worried about the tournament. No, it's real pretty. Just imagine, darling, our own home. Oh, you'll love it, Ben. It's on Valley Ridge Road, and we have the most wonderful neighbors. I met them. Neighbors, people, huh? Oh, you like them, dear. They're so simple and charming. Yeah, will they like us? I mean, me? Of course they will. Why do you say that? Oh, you know how I am about people. They... <laughs> Look, I'll go with you all the way on this, Val. The neighbors and the geraniums. I'll try to cultivate both of them. But I'm only betting on the geraniums. Well, let's start packing. Come on, we're going to Texas. You like it, huh? Very nice. And a mite better than our first car. When'd you buy it? Same time you bought the house. Oh, it's in the book. It's way on the back page. You probably didn't see it. <laughs> now we're even. Yes, a brand new car and a brand new house. Hogan's are doing all right. What are you thinking? Hmm? Uh, well, nothing. I was just thinking of Chuck and Norm. I just wonder why they checked out without at least saying goodbye. Whoa! Let's drive a few hundred miles before we take the world back on our shoulder. All right. Merry and bright from now on, huh? Cheer up, hon. Only 436 more miles. Only? You ought to pay a guy for driving in soup like this. On this road here. Shh, Ben, we're in Texas. Remember the first time we came through here? That old car of ours? That raggedy upholstery? The sun getting hotter and our bank account getting smaller. We ought to count our blessings. Be plenty thankful for them. I am. Especially you getting over being car sick. <laughs> oh, Ben, I wish you hadn't mentioned that. Oh, honey, I'm sorry. I thought you'd gotten over that. Oh, it's perfectly silly. A grown-up person well, like well, me... Lay your head back on the seat then. Close your eyes, Val, huh? Kind of relax. I'm sorry, Val. Oh, I'll be all right. Please, just, just go easy for a while. I'm just crawling along right now. The fog. It's getting worse. I'm glad there aren't many fools on the road like the Hogan's. Hogan's aren't fools. They're smart. Very smart. They've got a new home to go to. Number 197. This is Jennings. I'm at the wreck on Highway 80. It's a transcontinental bus in a Cadillac, head on. Ben Hogan, the golf champ, was riding in the cab with his wife. Looks like she's all right, but Hogan's dead. No, no, he isn't. Hey, 
Jennings. He moved. Mrs. Hogan, and Sister Beatrice has told me that you want a candid opinion. Yes, Doctor. Well, the x-rays show that your husband's shoulder is broken and his legs and pelvis are badly crushed. We'll have to do some surgery as soon as possible. Yes, Doctor. Now, our objective is to prevent an embolism. There is some evidence of clotting and circulatory failure we must try and prevent a clot from reaching the heart by tying off some of the big veins. We feel that Dr. John Everett of New Orleans is the greatest specialist in this field of surgery. If you approve, I'll be glad to call him. Would you please, Doctor, right away? Thank you. Thank you, too, Doc. Come, my dear, sit down. I'll have some coffee sent over. very kind of you to sit with me, sister. Welcome the opportunity. These floors. We've all overlooked you. Are you all right, my child? Oh, yes, of course. I'm afraid it's no, as far as Dr. Everett's concerned. He's willing to come, but there's no way of getting him here before noon tomorrow, and it might be dangerous to wait. It's too bad, because Doctor, he... I think I know of a way to get him here more quickly. Good. May I use the phone, sister? Certainly. Come with me. It's very urgent that I speak to him. Yes, I know it's after midnight, but this is an emergency. Yes, yes, I'll take full responsibility, yes. Please. Thank you. They're gonna wake him. Hello. Hello, General Richardson. This is Valerie Hogan, Ben's wife. Oh, I'm so glad I could get hold of you. Val, how is Ben? I called the hospital earlier, but... Dr. Everett in New Orleans? Dr. John Everett? Well, hold on, I'll, I'll check with the field. He's checking. Hello? Yes, General. There'll be a bomber on its way in five minutes. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Yes, I'll let you know as soon as we have news. And thanks again. He's going to send a plane right away. agree with Dr. Graham's findings, Mrs. Hogan. We'll have to go in and tie off the veins to his legs. I understand, Dr. Everett. Why don't you get yourself a little breakfast? There's some rugged days ahead, and we're all going to need you. I'll talk to you a little later. Dear Lord, I know you can do all things. 
This man has come to us. If it be thy holy will, let his life be spared. I'm sorry, Mrs. Hogan. You may go in just a few minutes. She'll be down in a little while. I'd say the operation was completely successful. Besides looking after the crushed bones in his shoulder, pelvis, and legs, we've reduced the immediate danger of clotting by tying off the veins. All in all, I am very well satisfied. Oh, thank heavens. I'm so grateful to you, Doctor. Of course, he'll have to be watched very carefully. He's been through quite an ordeal. Oh, of course. Dr. Everett. Ben and I have always been very honest with each other. He'll want to know something, and I'll have to tell him. Will he be able to walk again? Well, uh, quite honestly, that's difficult to say. You mean he may not be able to... Now, let's not hurry things. We've surmounted one serious hurdle. Let's face the question of walking later on, shall we? Yes, Doctor. Good girl. They still keep coming, Mr. Hogan. The receiving room is loaded with them. Oh, uh, please, sister, send them around to the wards. I want the cards, of course. They'll be most welcome. Thank you. Isn't it wonderful, Beth? This is great. <laughs> Re read some more of that. Yeah, sure. Danny and Michael Toole from Boston. The Randolph Washington family from Little Rock. And Saul and Gladys Graustein from Portland, Oregon. They all say the same thing, dear. Hope you'll get well soon. Do you know any of them? No. You know, I, I, I should have at least died to rate all this. Oh, here's one I really love, from Hayes, Kansas, signed, The Boys at Sadie's Truck Cafe. You know, Val, you know, I should have... I should have taken my eye off the ball once in a while, taken a good look at people. You know, I'd have missed a few golf shots, but it, uh, you see, I'd have learned something so much more important. I had to get hit by a ten-ton bus to wake up. Yeah, I've really been a jughead, Val. Hey, you can quote me. Ben? 
Remember me, old Blabbermouth Williams from Sawhead County, Texas? Sure. And Mrs. Blabbermouth? Norma! Oh, how odd. Ben, we'd have been here sooner, only... Only I was chasing her and she was chasing me. Yes, and we finally caught up with each other, too. And that's the last merry-go-round we're ever going to be on. Oh, I'm glad to hear that. Hey, what have they been doing to your boy, Val? He looks a mite peaked. You need any blood, son? Well, you're not my type. Are you kidding? You've been taking my blood all season. Oh, I plum forgot it. Don't go away. <laughs> ben, I make you acquainted with Jimmy Demerit and Dr. Kerry Hello, Middlecoff. Ben. Hi, Ben. Hello, Hi, Jim. Surprised, huh? I don't believe it. Go on, Jim. Go on. Tell him. Look, Ben, we're leaving in September to play for the Ryder Cup in England, and we want you to captain our team. Ben, all the guys voted for you. Well, that's an honor. I'm not sure how I'll be playing then. Well, play or don't play, you're going to be captain. It's all right. Time's up. Nurse, they just got here, and they, they come from a long way. Couldn't they stay just a little while? Huh? Doctor's orders, Mr. Hogan. I'm very sorry. Yeah, we, we better shove Ben. See you later. Bye, Val. Take Goodbye, care of yourself, Carrie. champ. Bye, Val. You're looking pretty in the June bug. Thank you, Jim. Bye. I think that means us, too, honey. Mm -hmm. Goodbye, Ben. Remember, we're on your side. Goodbye, Sam. Oh, Steve. Norm, thanks a million for coming. And you listen to me, Val. You quit worrying about your guy. He's been in the rough before. He'll come out all right. All right. Thanks, Chuck. I was swell at a gang, wasn't I? They were swell gang. And wasn't it wonderful about Norma and Chuck? You know, when he gets back in the groove, he's going to murder all of us. And get me. Us. Oh, sure, us. But in time, in time, dear. Let's not rush things. Let's get you back on your feet first. Yeah. Do you think they'll remember me? Who, oh, dear? Well, the, the gallery. All these people. The ones that showed me how wrong I was. Of course they'll remember you, dear. I hope so. Now, because I'd like to play, play just once more for them. You will, dear. You will. I've got some shopping to do. Say, will you uh, get me a couple of those sponge rubber balls, will you, Val? I want to start squeezing them, you know. I'll strengthen my hands. Yes, I'll get them, dear. Now you take a nap. And Val, you know, I think I'm gonna get better real fast.
Where's Mr. Hogan? About an hour ago, he called for a taxi, took some golf clubs, and up and left. Golf clubs? Gee, mister, you haven't played much, have you? Not lately. There's something wrong with your legs. You don't pivot. Shift from left to right, then back to left. It's all in using your legs right. You should have the pro teach you the fundamentals. Well, that's what I need, all right, son. Thanks for the lesson. OK, I got a shag. Help me get him in the car. Certainly. Look, Ben. Ever since that day in the hospital when you wanted to start exercising your hands, I've tried to go along with this. I know how you feel. I know how much it means to you. But I've got some feelings, too. You're my husband, and I want my husband alive. We've had eight doctors, and only two of them thought you could ever walk again. All of them said that golf was out, that you couldn't walk that far on sick, numb legs, that you mustn't punish them, that you were taking a risk just going from one chair to another, that there'll be always a danger of a clot. And you know what that could mean. I love you, Ben. I just can't take any more. I'm sorry, Ben. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, we've sure seen some top golf played in this Masters tournament. Right from the opening gun, slamming Sammy Sneed kept burning up the fairways, with Jimmy Demerit breathing down Sam's neck. And we mustn't forget our old pal Chuck Williams. Chuck gave a plenty good account of himself, too. And it was good to see Chuck among the old guard and in such fine fettle again. Absent, of course, but very much missed, was Ben Hogan. We know he's listening in. And we'd like to say hello to him from all of us. Well, that about rounds up the story as we saw it played here in Augusta, Georgia. And now I see Sam Sneed is walking over by the first tee and so... That's quite a tournament, eh? Yeah, Chuck's doing fine, huh, Val? I'm glad. So am I. Where are you going, dear? Oh, I, I just got to take a little walk, sort of stretch my legs. Well, I thought we might drive out to the club. The club? Well, they've been asking us to come out. All the gang will be there. Yeah, well, uh, look, say, I'd rather not, Val. I mean, of course, if you really want to. Oh, no, I don't care. I just thought you might uh, hit a few balls. You. you what was that? Well, I'd just as soon risk losing you that way as to watch you eating your heart out here at home. You mean it? Yes. I mean it. Oh, well. Hey, now, don't you worry. I'll take it easy, real easy. I'll just hit a few. Well, Val, will you call the club, ask them if they'll have Johnny shag for me? If you hit him far and straight, I'll shag for you. Be right down here.
Well, here we are. Yep. Here we are. How do you feel? Promise not to tell anybody? Mm. I feel worse than I did years ago at our first tournament in Niagara Falls. <laughs> I'm scared to death. Oh, you'll be all right, dear, as soon as you tee off. Yeah. Ben, mm -hmm. I know you're going to give them your best. But after all, it's, well, it's mostly a sports crowd out there. You mustn't be hurt or disappointed if... If what? The gallery. They don't know. They don't really know about your condition. You can't tell how they'll act. Don't worry, Val. Hmm? Well, here I go. Hit him far and straight, dear. Val, thanks for letting me try. And so he went off to face the worst ordeal in any champion's life. To try for a comeback. He was betting that win or lose, the gallery would be behind him. He was betting his life. Good luck, Tom. Thank you, Jim. Hello, Sam. Hey, Jim. How's it going? Been practicing putting, huh? Putting? Boy, I got the worst case of yips you've ever seen. Well, Hogan's back. Who's going to finish second this time? Can we keep that guy in Texas? How does he feel, Jim? How does he feel? You know, I bet on this guy to win. <laughs> Say, Ben, I've got a new driver you might like to use. No, thanks. I'll stick with my old one. That's what I was afraid of. Some golf balls from McGregor's, Mr. Hogan. Shall I put them in the locker? Will you please? Mr. Hogan, mm -hmm. we're glad to have you back. Well, thanks, Lee. Thanks very much. Five minutes on the tee. Demerit, Middlecoff, Hogan. Five minutes. Let's go, Doc. That's us. See you later, Sam. I win, boys. Play hard, Sam. Hi, Sammy. Let's go, Ben. Well, oh, hold it, hold it. Don't take my man away now. I gotta give him his pep talk. We're the ones who need it. Oh, sure. You haven't been over par in a year. See you on the tee, Ben. All right. Well, Texas, how do you feel? I never felt better. Good, good. Looks like they turned out some real unusual California weather for you guys. Sunshine in January. What do you mean, you guys? Because I withdrew. You what? Sure, sure, cancel out. Look at that. That's what I got for going on a wagon. Anyhow, I cut my wrist opening a bottle of soda pop. Yeah, I know. You figure these guys are gonna whip me and you don't want to help them cut me up, huh? Beat Hogan at Riviera on Hogan's Alley? Don't be silly. Come on, why don't you level with me, Chuck? All right, Ben, I will. You're a great golfer. My book, one of the greatest. But you gotta have the equipment. The legs. You can't shoot 69s out there for four days in a row and guts alone. Nobody can. Not even a Texan? Oh. <laughs> Come on, let's get out there and get some of that sunshine, huh? Okay. On the tee, Dr. Carrie Middlecoff. Good luck, Texas. Make a liar out of me. The crowd had given Ben a heartwarming welcome back to golf. 
Now before him lay four grueling days of competition against great golfers like Dr. Carrie Middlecoff, Jim Demerit, Sam Sneed, and others. Plotting his way through the first round, Ben was heartened by a new experience. The big gallery was behind him and rooted for him every inch of the way. And the harder they pulled for him, the more he dug in. He was trying to repay faith with faith. 73 the first day, Ben was playing pretty good golf, even for a man who had two good legs. The second round found Ben still on his feet and swinging. And soon, even the most pessimistic of us began to nurse a tiny hope that Ben might do the impossible. And then it began to rain. This rain won't help Hogan. It's the worst thing for his leg. The California skies had opened up. And through that day and the next, the rain kept coming down. Ben refused to quit, and so did his loyal gallery. He stumbled and slipped and sloshed and drove his aching, swollen legs from tea to fairway to green, over and over again. And all around me, as I trudged along with the gallery, I could hear, how long can Hogan last? How long will his legs hold out? He's got to blow up. Somebody's got to stop him. Chuck, why don't you? Nobody can stop him. Nobody should. There was still the fourth and final round to face tomorrow. And still the rain kept coming down. But as he was approaching the 18th green, the sun suddenly broke through the clouds, and with it our hopes soared, for Ben was well in the lead. Take it, take it. It's good for you. I know. Well, we did it. We, you and your umbrella. <laughs> I borrowed one. Who's left out there? Oh, a few strays. Sam Sneed, couple of other fellas. Sneed? How's he doing? We're out here on the 18th fairway with Sam Sneed. As I told you before, back on the 14th tee, Sam was told that Ben Hogan was home with 280. That meant that Sneed would have to shoot two pars and two birdies to tie. Well, after three holes, he got the two pars and one birdie. Now he needs one more birdie. Sam needs just... That would give him a 66. A tie. Two tough shots. The question is, can he make them?
It's a bad one. No, no, wait. <laughs> it's on the green, ladies and gentlemen. It looked like I was going to be lost in the crowd, but it hit the side of the hill and kicked on the green. Those are the brakes. And it looks from here as if Sneed has about a 20-foot putt. A tough downhill 20-footer. This may mean a playoff. Ben, you couldn't stand a playoff. He's addressing the ball. Here he goes. He made it! This means a playoff. A playoff? I wish Sam had won. So do I. Ben didn't win the playoff. As I stood by on the 18th green and watched him go over and shake hands with Sam, I thought to myself, well, Ben gave it all he had, but he didn't win. How will his gallery, his public, treat him now? We didn't have to wait long for our answer. For that very night... And I am indeed very happy to introduce our Toastmaster, the Dean of our Sports Riding Fraternity, Mr. Grantlin Rice. Grant <laughs> Mr. Chairman, gentlemen, we have met here tonight to honor a man who lost a golf match. Some of you are probably wondering why our guest of honor isn't with us. Well, Valerie has him resting in the next room. He'll be with us presently. Now, I'd like to call on another man from the state of Texas, a very fine golfer and a close friend of Ben Hogan. His name is Chuck Williams. Thank you, Scribblers. Thank you, Granny. <coughs> I, uh, I just happen to have here a few thousand well-chosen words about fellow Texans in general, and uh, one kid from Fort Worth in particular. <laughs> However, I can cut it all down to just five words. I'm proud to be here. Now that we've heard from Texas, I recognize West Virginia and ask Mr. Sam Sneed to say a few words. Sammy? Well, I'll say it quick. He's the same old Hogan. He still scares you to death. And a gamer guy never lived. I'm glad Sam said that, and in just those words. The people whose hearts went out to Ben when he was in the hospital, the great galleries that followed him around the course, were not applauding a winner or a loser. They were applauding a dead game guy. And they'll keep on applauding him. For, as a wise man once said, courage never goes out of fashion. And so I have the honor, and a very great honor, of introducing a man who the record books will show lost a tournament today. He didn't lose. His legs simply were not strong enough to carry his heart around. Ben? There was a time when I used to think that once I teed off in a tournament, I was all alone out there, completely on my own. Well, this tournament has taught me otherwise. Now, you see, I wasn't alone out there these past few days. 
Now, I was with the thousands of people who love golf as I do. I was competing against great golfers who play the game as it's always been played and as it should be played, giving no quarter and asking none. And for this, I'm, I'm particularly grateful to Sam Snead. I'm very thankful to all of you for being so, also very kind and generous. You made me very happy. But you've made one other person very happy. Because besides me, she and she alone knows how much my playing again has meant to me. Thanks a lot, fellas. I'll see you around.